this is obviously some carnage resulting from a, an incident I had where I took out the landing gear. Uh, the whole bottom of the plane, as you can see, is pretty torn up and broken apart. And the purpose of this video is to have, you know, my builder, the guy who's been taking care of my aircraft forever, uh, show you exactly how he does it, how he's gonna turn this into a nice functioning airplane with the landing gear seated properly so it uh, doesn't happen to, from a standard landing, how to reinforce everything and recover it and uh, do a professional job with it. Uh, Steve has done this stuff for me before and I thought it is very important for him to share some of his wealth of knowledge with everybody. So we're going to watch him uh, turn this from this into the airplane it was. All right, gents, here's a little bit of a continuation of some of the steps I've put in here. You can see over here, this part of the landing gear block housing. Uh, I put it back together again. It was cracked here in the middle. All the way across <laughs> across the top and when you put these things back together again it's kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together the best thing to do is dry fit it first so you know how it's supposed to go together what it's supposed to look like when it's together and then as best you can fit it all together and squeeze it down because this these two pieces right here I had this piece up here at about a 45 make sure it would fit over here and then this piece over here trying to get it together because it was all broken completely apart right here it kind of just folded down kind of like I said just folded down into each other but if you dry fit it first and see how it's going to go it'll it'll come out a whole lot better and what I'm going to do on these two sides here is I'm just, just going to cut this out straight across all the way down here where all these broken pieces are and, and take these pad, this panel out and do the same on this side. Just cut it all out straight over here. This whole section right here, just cut it all out straight and then I'll end up refabbing another piece of plywood sheeting on here once I get these formers in here straightened out where they need to how they need to be built up this one needs to be replaced this one in here needs to be built up a little bit and these two over here need to be built up so that this skin has something to lay on as it's coming across you can see what's left on this side right there this piece here is left on here so I'm going to use that as part of the template of what I'm going to build and, and attach and make over here so this skin has got something to hold on to. So, that's just part of the steps. And you can see right here, supposed to be a former right here. It should go across and come attach into here. And it's not there. You can see the other side too. The former underneath there, starts there, goes across and attaches over here so that needs to be duplicated over here and you see there's a piece of it right right inside there that i can either use or i'll i'll break that off and add another piece to it and put a double behind it to give it the strength that it needs um here's the other pieces that are all part of what's come off of here and some of those pieces I just use as jigsaw puzzles to, to see where they go and how it goes and try to put it back together using those pieces if I can. If not, I'll just have to fabricate my own. Okay, I'm gonna hopefully make my video taking skills a little bit better so you can see this a little bit more clearly as it's in process. This is the one side where I took off that whole panel. If you look back on the previous video, I took off this whole damaged piece here. You can see the formers inside here, the ribs. I need to extend those up a little bit here so they'll take the forming of the skin because the skin's gonna come up this high. I need to replace 
this former cross. You can see I've put one inside here and I put a doubler behind it on both sides to give it an anchor. I did recess it inside that slot a little bit, as you can see right there. Here close, you can see it's been cut in a little bit and made made to fit in there, but put a doubler behind it just for added strength and security. And like I said, I cut this all out flush to this bottom ribbon here. I'll get some more plywood and I'll fill in the hole here also. Use this. Former is part of the skin, so it lays down the way it's supposed to. Again, like I said, I'll build these two up so they come up to it. There's the landing gear platform. It's got to go in there. I'm just trial fitting and see how it goes and where it goes. And on the other side, I changed my mind about cutting out the whole piece. What I'm going to do is just slowly put the side together. And you see inside here, I put a doubler behind it, pushed, pulled it out, and I see, I've see eight it in here. So what I'll do is once I get farther down the road there, I'll put some filler in here and smooth it back down so it's nice and smooth. This is pretty strong because I've seed aided it on both sides. On the inside here, probably going to have to cut this stringer out that goes across here and attach it to this part of the landing gear bulkhead. And I'll figure that out as I'm going. But like I said, I just want to show you, I, I try, kind of changed my mind is how I'm going to do this side. I'm not going to cut the whole thing out. I'm just going to use what I've got there. Fill it in, double it from the inside. I do have to put one big, long stringer across from here to here. And I'll be working on that and show you that up in the next portion of the video. So little by little okay a little continuation here um remember what i said about putting things together like a jigsaw puzzle well michael found a couple extra pieces <laughs> not extra but a couple other pieces that i did not have beforehand for piecing all this together and this happens to be one of the pieces a cross piece for the landing gear brace and again if you look right there real close you see how that little piece slides into that little piece. That's what I mean about the jigsaw puzzle. You gotta put it all together like that and make all the right fits all the way across. There's a little bit of a chunk of wood right out of there. You can see that. And you see how that wood is down there? Right there. That all's gotta go back together again, so. Uh, unfortunately, I'm missing the other half of that, which goes on the back side. So I'm gonna to have to fashion that out of some ply and make that piece work. So this covering can go back on here on its anchors and you know be one of the air inlet holes. So it's gonna go back around here like that. So just to give you an idea how this was together. This was on here, the cross piece that's missing, it's gotta go there. This cross piece that's here goes right there and then this other air in that hole goes over here so and again jigsaw puzzle see the little notches right there and that little ledge it all fits right there so once I get this out of the way and put it where it's supposed to be all that stuff will fit right there in those little slots so, like I said, just a big jigsaw puzzle you got to put together and having to make this one piece with all these notches on here is it's a little bit tedious, but that's what you got to do sometimes. Sorry. One of the tips I like, well, not even a tip. Anyway, this is what I like to do. I just take a drop of CA sometimes, put it on the spot that I'm going to, that I want to cement, let it soak in, and then... I take the accelerator and instead of spraying it 
I just use a dab of it because it's a whole lot less waste, I think, and more controlled. You see here, one or two drops of CA on there. I take this thing, just let it drop out the bottom. Boom. That's really all you need. And as I was talking about earlier, how you put everything together like a jigsaw puzzle and dry fit stuff. I uh, dry fitted this piece. You see how it all goes back together where it's supposed to. See how the cracks all line up. Well, what I'm going to do is, like I said, dry fit everything. Make sure these pieces all fit together the right way. Everything lines up where it's supposed to. You can see this piece here. I'm going to have to do some modifications to it because it's supposed to go in that hole there. So I'm going to either scab on to cut it off here, scab it in there. However I'm going to do it, I don't know what, which way yet. Same on this side. This piece is broken off here, but it's got to go there. So different ways you can do it. Put a scab, put a piece underneath it, scab it into it so it lays on top of it and, and it's anchored there. But what I'm going to do right now is take these pieces out again. Fig mix up some high saw. Stick the high saw inside there and put these things together like the little jigsaw puzzle they are. And then I'll be able to use these landing gear mounts as clamps uh, the clamping anchor and I'll put a clamp on the inside here pull this down so that area is nice and flush like that so you see how much gap I got right now this is because form fit but when I put a clamp on there I'll be able to squeeze it all together make it work the way it's supposed to fit in there the way it's supposed to so that's how it goes guys all right another continuation I had to make this former here. I made it, basically I had copied this piece here, but see what I did, I had to cut it all out and it was, it was that thick, the wood was. But I cut it down, sanded it down, and got it proper thickness. So it meets with this one over here. And I'll put it up here, do a little more notching on it to make sure everything fits right. And then I'll be able to complete this section here and this section across here and get this things, this little jigsaw puzzle put together a little bit better. So just want to give you a heads up on some of the stuff that I'm doing on this and how it's going together. So, all right, gents, here's uh, what it looks like after this piece that I've manufactured and is in place and glued in and some formers to finish up some side pieces here that need to go in tonight <clears throat> and you can see this side over here now it's all formed up put back together again i'll do some smoothing out sand it down a little bit and put in these put in this piece of plywood here and i gotta do a little bit of Modifications up here for the cover trays or covers to fit in. One of them fits up front here, and the other one fits right here. So, and the landing gear goes right there. All right, everybody, here's another step in this process of putting this plane back together again. We've done some form building for the hatch that goes underneath the airplane it sits inside here like this i made this runner here go across because it was gone that piece is still in there and the anchors and you see the little angled anchor blocks that hold down this cover goes in over here like this once everything is in in there and this one goes up over here on this side i just got to make another one of those blocks right there that stringer so it'll go across here and put it on this end 
it's not there. So, patched up the sides here. I'm going to do some sanding here, smooth this side down. And this side over here, same thing. Patched up a hole over there, going to sand this down and smooth it all out. So, it's coming together and should have it covered here in a little while. But, just more of the process and, you know, a lot of this is just taking your time, being patient with it. Again, the biggest thing is if you can put it back together like a jigsaw puzzle. Some pieces inside there, there's an art structurally required. I'm not putting those back in there. Doesn't even matter. And there's one on both sides. So, again, that's nothing more than a real thin single ply pulses. It's just for, you know, not even structural. But anyway, I'm not going to put that back in there. It's not needed. So, you can do the same if you want, or if you're feeling inclined to making everything 100%, that's entirely up to you. But, you know, just some steps that I use and ways that I do things and make things work. The biggest thing for this was that cradle assembly for the landing gear. So, once we get that, once we get these two pieces finished up, this one's just about done. We'll add the covering back. Covering goes all the way back to here, and then uh, you know, make a little bit of covering in here, and uh, cover these two sides here, and the other side that needs covering over there, and it'll be flying again. Hopefully, I can get it done here soon. It's been a couple weeks, but I've only been here. I mean, a couple of hours a day, every every couple of days, every, probably once a week. Anyway, again, if you were to put some time, direct time on this, it'd probably be eight to maybe ten hours of direct, complete work. The thing you got to work with is the drying of the glue. That's what takes some time. You know, thirty minute epoxy. If you can get away with fifteen minute, that's fine. But it's also what you how you want to put it together. Some of this epoxy that I use here, I put some micro balloon fillers in there. So when I sand it down, it's all nice and smooth and pretty. And I'll give you pictures of those when I get it done. Okay, gents <clears throat> and everybody else. Um, this should be the last installment of this portion of my making this video. Mike should put all this together and make it look pretty good. I've done all the Covering, fixing, made everything fit right, so the covers all go on. <clears throat> this one goes on like this. And it'll be attached like it should be laid in there. <clears throat> I'm going to put the covering on now. Make it all fit, <clears throat> look a whole lot better and everything else. So set the wheels in there, just put the bolts in, head them in on that side too, just to make sure everything lines up. So everything lines up, still good. And there's the side, got all repaired. So if you go back and look at the first part of the video, you'll see what it looked like to begin with and what we had to do to fix it. So these should come straight off. There's the landing gear bay off everything's all you know nice and pretty and everything works fits and all that kind of good stuff so anyway just a few admin notes i guess um again this is something i, I enjoy doing uh <clears throat> i also like flying them too so <laughs> Uh, that's one of the fun parts, and, and with Mike Wargo here, uh, I get to fly a lot, a lot of different things, and uh, see some of the airplanes he's got. I got a Tundra up there, he's got another electric one up there that we work together on, and his Hobby King planes, and he got another jet down here too that I might have to take that off his hands one of these days too, just because it says Marines on the side of it, and I'm a retired Marine, so like I said, this is a... Uh, 
something that can be done in probably <clears throat> eight to 10, maybe 12 hours of, of direct work. But the, you know, only thing you gotta worry about is the time for the glue to set. So if you use, you know, 15 minute epoxy, that's okay. 30 minutes is kind of what I like to use because it works pretty good. But whatever you guys want to use, it's entirely up to you. So, so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, once I get it all done up, I'll uh, give you another bit of a video and then you'll see all this as a compilation. So, Here. covered it up with what I had. I had some of the covering left over that I was able to peel off to begin with, put it back on. Made all the proper size form fittings for these two pieces that go on here for some airflow inside the engine compartment. And it didn't have any more blue, so all I could use was white and uh, recover the section over here. So I'll hit that with some heat right here and take all those wrinkles out. And she's back ready to fly. Landing gear's all in there. Bolts are in where they're supposed to be. And structurally back together again. So anyway. Mike's gonna order some new blue covering and we can make it nice and pretty, but the, the goal is to get it functional and flying again. So any questions I guess you can ask Michael about them, but just to give you a heads up, stuff I like to do, enjoy doing it. So if you got any questions, I guess you can direct them to Michael and I'll be happy to answer any if I can. And uh, I'll see you guys out there at the field 